Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named odd swap sort taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem on invariance, which is a powerful combinatorics or mathematical concept used in these kind of problems. So whenever you encounter a problem which asks you whether an array can be sorted in increasing order or not, or whether some conditions need to be met and you perform some operations on an array, then it's always a good idea to, to consider invariance. And invariance are basically quantities which do not change after performing the operations. So after you perform the operations on the array, the quantity which remains the same and which does not change after each operation will be the invariant quantity. And it's a good idea to think in terms of invariance whenever you encounter operations on an array. So in this problem, we are basically given n integers in the array A and we need to sort the array in increasing order or non-decreasing order by performing the following operation. In each operation, we choose two adjacent elements and we will swap them if their sum is odd. So basically, if one element is odd and the other element is even, then we swap them. If both are even or if both are odd, then we do not swap them. And we need to figure out whether the array can be sorted in increasing order or not using this kind of swap operation where we swap elements of the opposite parity. So in the first example, the first element is 1, second is 6, third is 31 and fourth is 14 in this array of size 4. And in this case, we know that we can swap, for example, the first and second elements because their sum is 7. We can also swap the second and third elements and we can also swap the third and fourth. So let's try to sort it in increasing order by first swapping the third and fourth elements so that the array becomes 1, 6, 14 and 31 and that is a sorted array. In the next example, we cannot sort the array because we can't swap 2 and 4 because their sum is even and their parities are the same. So in the third example, we can try and sort the array by swapping the second and third elements. So we know that 2, 6, 9, 7, 10 is the array. 2, 6 is fine. Now we need to sort 9, 7 and 10. However, 9, 7 and 10 cannot be sorted because 9, 7 and 10 has to become 7, 9, 10. And you can verify that you can't swap 7 and 9. That's why the answer will be known in this example also. And in the final example, the answer is yes because you don't need to perform any operations because the array is already sorted. So let's try to analyze the invariant in this problem. So there are two main invariants in this problem which help us solve the problem. So the two invariants are the relative positions of the odd elements and the relative positions of the even elements. Now, why is it the case that the positions of odd elements won't change with respect to each other? And why is it the case that the positions of the even elements won't change with respect to each other? So the key idea why this holds true is because if you consider numbers, zeros and ones, uh, which basically represents uh, whether or not, whether zero represents the numbers divisible by two and one represents the numbers um, congruent to one mod two or basically odd. So these are even numbers and these are odd numbers. So let's consider zeros to be even numbers and ones to be odd numbers. So if you consider some random array where we have uh, this kind of an array, and in this case, we know that we can swap elements which are adjacent to each other only if one element is an odd number and one element is an even number. So in this case, we can swap the first and second elements. We can swap these two elements. We can swap these two elements. We can swap these two elements. However, if you see after we perform a swap operation, so let's say we swap these two elements. So let's just consider this sequence and we swap these two elements. Then in this sequence, in this particular summary, we realize that these two elements cannot swap, be swapped with each other. And that's why the positions of these odd numbers will not change. It, they will always remain in the same odd order. And the positions of the even numbers will again not change. So even if you swap the even numbers one more time, like if you swap, if you perform a swap operation one more time like this, or if you swap these two elements, then you will realize that this is the sequence which you get. However, the positions of the even elements cannot change and these two numbers cannot be swapped with each other. 
So let's take a concrete example to make this better and clearer. So in this example, what I'm trying to say is that you can swap 5 and 4, you can swap 4 and 7, you can swap 3 and 6, you can basically swap any two odd and even numbers which are adjacent to each other. However, once you perform the swap operations and once you get the odd numbers on one side and the even numbers on the other side, so for example, you get them in this manner by, perf by performing the swaps, you can no longer swap these two elements. So in this case, the correct sorted array would be something like 3 comes before 5. So 3 should come before 5. However, that is not possible. 3 cannot be swapped with 5 because 3 is an odd number and an odd number can never be swapped with an odd number adjacent to it. And um, that's why we realize that the relative positions of the odd numbers of all these odd numbers will remain the same with respect to each other. They will not be able to swap uh, with each other and that's why we can we can never we can never keep this in increasing order we already need them to be in increasing order so in this case the even numbers are in increasing order and that's what we want and similarly we need the odd numbers to be already in increasing order so we we will use this invariant uh, effectively by just checking if by just isolating the odd numbers and the even numbers and checking if they are already sorted. So let's say that, let's say that this was not the example. Like in this case, we know that the answer will be no because we can't swap at 3 and 5 and we cannot ensure that 3 goes to the beginning because 3 is, 3 is an odd number and an odd number cannot be swapped with a previous odd number. That's why we will print no. However, let's consider an example where the original array was like this, 3, 4, 7, 5, 6. So in this case, as I explained, we can swap the numbers and we can ensure that uh, all the odd numbers are over here. So we can ensure that the odd numbers 3, 5, 7 come over here and 4, 6 come over here. So now we know that the odd numbers are in increasing order and the even numbers are in increasing order relative to each other. Now we know that the odd numbers are in increasing order relative to each other and the even numbers are in increasing order relative to each other. This helps us because we know that we can keep swapping the adjacent odd and even numbers to ensure that they fall in the right place. So what we can do is we can keep swapping the 4 to make it go to the correct place. So we can swap the 4 twice to make it come over here. Then we can swap the 5 to make it come over here. Then we can swap the 6 and we can swap the 7. So in this manner, we can sort the uh, original array in, in, into the correct sorted manner. If we ensure that the odd numbers are sorted with respect to each other and the even numbers are sorted with respect to each other from the original array. So basically what I'm trying to say is that we pass through the elements of the original array. We accumulate the odd numbers in one set and the even numbers in one set. And if the two sets are already in increasing order, if the two arrays of odd numbers and even numbers are already in increasing order, then we print yes. Otherwise, we print no. Now, we know that the answer will be no for sure because we know that we can't swap two odd numbers. And we know that the answer will be yes in this case for sure because we know that we can swap an odd number with an even number. And we can ensure that the even numbers and the odd numbers go to their correct positions by swapping the adjacent odd and even numbers um, without changing the positions, without changing the relative positions of the odd numbers and the even numbers. So now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea. So recapping the idea one final time before I show you the code, we will simply accumulate the odd numbers and the even numbers separate from each other. And we will simply check if the odd vector of elements is sorted with respect to each other. And if the even vector is sorted. And the reason why we do this is because if we know both of these conditions are true, then we know that we can arrange the odd numbers and the even numbers in increasing order and we can effectively merge the two arrays together. So we are performing a merge operation of these two vectors together. And the reason why we can do this merge is because we know that we can always swap an odd element and an even element. However, if the condition is not true, then we know that the odd vector, for example, will always retain the same ordering with respect to each other. So the odd and even vectors will retain the same ordering, will be in the same ordering 
with respect to each other and hence they will never be sorted and the reason why we, they will be in the same ordering like the reason why there will be a case of a 5 always being before a 3 so the reason why 5 will always come before a 3 is because we can never ensure that 3 hops over 5 we can never ensure that 3 and 5 are adjacent to each other and they cross we can't enable them to cross each other because we can't ensure that two odd numbers adjacent to each other are swapped we can only ensure that an odd number and an even number are swapped that's why we can effectively merge the two arrays and swap them however in this case we cannot swap them because they can never be adjacent to each other and hence if they are not in the correct sorted order we cannot sort the array as a whole so now i'll show you the code so in the code for each test case i take in the value of n I store the odd vector and the even vector as the vectors containing all odd numbers and the even numbers. So if x is divisible by 2, we add it to the even vector. Otherwise, we add it to the odd values vector. And um, then we basically sort the two vectors. We sort the even value vector and the odd values vector and um, in a separate arrays. And we will just iterate through all the elements in the odd vector and all the elements in the even vector and each time we will check whether uh, the two elements are equal to each other or not so if order phi is not equal to sorted of order phi then this means that uh, the odd vector isn't sorted and this basically means that uh, we can't sort the odd vector and uh, because we can't swap two odd numbers and this basically means that um, we can't sort the whole array as a whole and um, similarly for the even vector we do the same thing and in the end if both uh, vectors are sorted then we know that we can swap an odd number and an even number and that's why we can merge them together and that's why we'll print yes in the case uh, there is no there is no position um, where it becomes false and if there's a position where it becomes false we'll print no so a simple way of writing this is uh, if is we will print yes with an end l otherwise we will print no and you can verify that this code gets accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you had any doubts in the problem do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.